morning. I invite you to join me in your being state. Look, I realized I didn't even take this off yet. I, I slept in my heart necklace last night. Um, I'm like, look, look how fit and strong I am. This is not a bragging thing. This is a, wow, this is what being dedicated, not necessarily to a fitness regime, but to caring for myself. It, it creates this. I was thinking on my way up here, I keep running into professional athletes. It's so weird. I think I was around three different professional baseball, I mean, football players, one professional basketball player, one professional baseball player. And I don't know who else. I'm like, oh, there hasn't been soccer yet. I did meet a soccer one a while back, but that was before. It's like you and a lot of bodybuilders are around where I am, where I skate. And some um, professional hockey players too, I forgot. Yeah. Wow. Anyway, really weird because when, when you exercise this much, and I'm not obsessive about exercise, I'm just about being outside being balanced in my body. My body was just wanting it. It's like correcting from years of, well, I always exercise, but, oh, look at these birds. Don't worry, this is not a video about exercise, but it's part of how I serve, is helping people to understand um, um, how to how to be balanced in your body, how to be comfortable with the masculine and the feminine side of your body, being in your body, being in your physical body, not just in your head, which is a temptation. And, you know, because we think in our heads, we're not gonna get hurt as much. We just stay in our minds, stay nerdy. Yes, oh, oh. what is that? That's like, a, that's like hang loose. Anyway, um, but I plan to do another video at the end of this, if it happens. Hello, son. So I decided this video could just go while we're walking. My black eye is almost gone. Okay, enough talk about all of that. Let's look at I know I said be in your being self, but if you just look at nature for a second. There's the sky. All right, I was, I was at a crossroads, so I was asking my intuition which way. Because <laughs> right now I trust my intuition more than myself. That's so funny, that's great. Maybe that's what I've been being led to. Um, so besides my reflections of how many professional athletes I keep um, finding in my life, is I was thinking of one of Elliot's songs. Elliot Smith is funny because he's so not a professional athlete. Oh, but you know what? Bob Marley loved soccer. American, uh, I mean, football in Europe, but he loved that. And I can't remember what Elliot said he played, some basketball, but he was not athletic type. But anyway, Elliot Smith, I bring him up because he, was a soul friend of mine here on earth and I get intuitions with the flavor of Elliot all the time it's like you start getting to know personalities or something but 
he left us so many songs and he was so deep in his songs that I know a lot of people are reminded of what the deep consciousness that he conveyed, you know? So I kind of feel like if I understand, oh, here's our view. Here's where I often go, here, I'll show you. We can see the ocean this other way. That's the ocean. I think they cut down some of these bushes where those animals were. They were right there, but anyway, we'll see. Um, Sometimes when I go off, I'm not meant to, to go off on a tangent, but sometimes I go off because I'm deeply present. And I always just still want part of me to be connected to where I am, but also completely focused to you guys as well. So I'm learning that this is still, all of life is learning this balance, you know, learning I don't know how to do this perfectly, but that's what I was going to say with Elliot. His song, he says, Nobody knows what he's doing. Still hanging around. Can't make a sound. Can't make a sound. So, I was laughing when I was hearing that. And I have a whole, I have a whole hour lesson on that song on the ego path in that song and the soul path in that song, because I don't know. I was like, they wanted me to die. Like, like I was on assignment. I feel like when these things come to me, it's because I meant to, that's what I was going to say. Part of my, part of my calling as I'm understanding it is to like carry on a lot of the consciousness that Elliot helped build. And anyway, but I was laughing this morning because I was like, Elliot, he probably didn't even know what he was doing, still hanging around, you know? I haven't, I haven't had the connection that I had with Elliot before. Anyway, I won't go into all of this. Um, there's things I can't, I can't put in a short video. And no matter how long this video is going to be, it's short to me because there's so much that I have been given and so much that I would love to convey so you guys can have freedom in your own lives and peace and anyway, so let's get started more is nobody knows what he's doing still hanging around that came up because it's like, I don't even know if he knew what he was doing, you know? professional bikers man definitely been around those but I don't know which ones are pros so weird but you know I, I exercise maybe three hours a day but it doesn't feel like it to me it's just part of my life I guess it'd be like if I was a yoga teacher and I did four classes a day or three classes a day and I just did them with them. It's like that. Because here I am exercising while I'm talking to you guys. Hold on. People coming. Let's see. Morning. Y'all look happy. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? We're out here, right? Okay, here, I'll show you more of the ocean. I know in England, like, people can't even leave their houses right now. I won't talk about that. I don't want to date my videos. <laughs> if I'm dating, <laughs> that's hilarious. Date my videos. Um, some things I do keep private, believe it or not, but... 
was I'm called not to do. So when when you do that, um, oh, it was ten ten. When you learn how to get into stillness, okay, it takes work to learn how to be here, but it's work that will free you for the rest of your life. So it's work that's worth it, you know? Um, it's kind of like now, I, I have my strength and my arms and stuff. When I did my surf lesson, I got up every time, except for the one wave it took me, <laughs> which, you know, it's gotta keep you humble somehow, whatever. And maybe next time I won't, it doesn't matter. It wasn't, I wasn't looking, hold on. I wasn't, I didn't have to have those results, but what it was showing me was all this work that I put in, caring for myself physically and balancing out my emotions and speaking up for myself in other ways in my life. I, they keep, um, they keep, helping me they keep aiding every other aspect of my life you see how someone said it the other day they said like look at the mobility that has come into your life you know and I was like what I'm all I was always on the go anyway not in a neurotic way but just like what? You think that's going to stop me? Nothing's going to stop me. I thought I had some kind of physical disease and I might have had. Anyway, so... Oh, and the sweetest thing happened. My friend, was, like, he's all cut. He was he was going pro, pro football and he's all muscular. He did muscle, whatever those events are, you know, where you show your muscles and stuff. And anyway, and he... It was cold the other day, but he decided to wear shorts. He, his intuition told him, he listens to his intuition. He's great. And he, um, and this paraplegic man came up to him when we were skating, he, roll, he rolled up on his wheelchair and he's just like, I'm so glad you're wearing shorts today, man. Your, your leg muscles are just so inspiring to me. Like this was a guy that didn't have the use of his legs, but it was just, he was so happy and joyous for someone that did and someone that had muscles in them, you know? It was like, wow, what, what, what a, what a gift, what a gift and a gift he got back from following his intuition and dealing with a little cold that day, you know? Just so he could be present in that place with that guy, for that guy, you know? And, and in his own body for his own reasons, he had, he had reasons I won't go into that. That's other people's stories. But anyway, so oh, I'm like, then we'll address the elephant in the room. Uh, if any of you guys just pick up on this video, it's fine. Like, feel free to subscribe, get notifications, all that stuff. But um, or whatever, follow me if this is on Instagram and, and whatever it is, it doesn't matter. I don't, I don't have to name the platforms. <sighs> is, um, let's stay in the stillness for a second then I'll talk about what happened in the last video so we can bring words to it. So if you think of Elliot saying, can't make a sound. I'm still, nobody knows what he's doing. Still hanging around. It's talking about, I've talked about this in a lot of my videos, but I did more specifically a couple videos ago. So anyway, you have your ego mind. Oh, there's a little bunny. I don't know if I turned my camera fast enough. There's the ego mind up here. And then behind that, back here, imagine if I could have two hands right now, is your soul self and your ego mind can't understand. Like nobody knows what he's doing. Not even Elliot knows. And I just felt that similarity 
it's like a friend coming and going, oh, I feel the same way as you when I remember a song like that, you know, because my ego mind doesn't understand what I'm doing when I'm following the soul path. I, there's a bigger picture and I have a knowing in myself. Your intuition knows, has a knowing. I had to do that for a second. Sons of my eyes. And so, um, nobody knows what, I mean, nobody knows what he's doing. I don't know what I'm doing. He doesn't know what he's doing in the sense that your ego mind can't comprehend the things of the soul back here. It has just a limited, it's like, even though your piano is an instrument and can play like, oh, amazing, like Beethoven and Mozart and, you know, and Elliot songs and, you know, so many beautiful songs. You're, it's also, it's, it's a piano, you know, it has a limited capacity. And so you have what they call like a brain in your heart almost. And some people say you have a brain in your gut type of thing like but we have also a soul a consciousness in fact it's not we have a soul we are the soul we are the consciousness and you don't have to just take my word for it find this out yourself you know you are the soul and you're in a body you are this consciousness you know I love I, I quote different people but George McDonald is one that said that do not teach your kids they have a soul teach them they are a soul and they have a body it helps get truth more rapidly into your innermost being when you have things in the in the truthful order not in the opposite order because the world will tell you a different order one second morning hi so sweet i love i love seeing women i love seeing men i love seeing kids and bikers and just people of all different ages like being out here it's so pretty look at this look at these Let's see if you can yeah. look at just that shot but what's beyond them this is, that's exactly what I'm talking about. I'm so glad it's, it's showing up in nature. Oh, and someone's walking behind me, but anyway. So there's a piano, there's an instrument, and although it can, it seems to have a mind of its own because it seems like the instrument is producing this beautiful, amazing, this majestic music, you know, that soothes your soul and brings you back aligned with, with truth and with harmony and with peace. And it goes beyond your defenses and brings all this healing. Although it seems like the piano is doing that. It's not, it's the person playing the piano. And so we have a soul and all these things come from our soul self and from inspiration, from our connection to the divine, to heaven. And people don't know it to love, you know, to a higher force, love. And people don't know it. They just think it's this personality. It's this body, it's this, it's Cheryl, it's whatever. And you guys know, if you've seen my other videos, like, well, especially my teaching videos that are in my class, actually. I don't know why it comes f through in a more <sighs> deeper way. I, um, I, I, maybe I'm more concentrated there on what we're teaching on or something that's on awakening your intuition through the power of now. I'm gonna go over here, let these people pass behind me so they're not listening to the whole thing. I mean, unless they want to. It's kind of like turning onto a channel and finding, oh wow, what is this video? Oh dear. There's the hill. 
I'm not, I don't even feel winded. Like, like bring it. I just started. Okay, so. Oh, lovely. There's a valley down here. Okay. All right. When you get into the stillness and you recognize you're a soul in a body, then it's, it's just like when Jesus gave us the clue, you know, he gave us the clue on how to live life. He said, seek first the kingdom of God and his, her, divine loves, right wayness. That's how I've been seeing righteousness. Not like this is the right way, that's the wrong way. It's more like I, because we have a limitation with words, just like we have a limitation with the mind and the soul is behind it, you know, and above it. And it's like, if you were an enlightened being and you wanted to convey, hey, this is the way out of suffering. This is the way of peace. This is the way of true love, you know, the hero's path, the path in the fairy stories, you know, that, that brings you to um, the princess, you know, or the prince, or the happily ever after, you know. How would you convey that narrow path? How would you communicate that to people to let them know? I see a narrow path right across. I don't know if you can see it all the way over there. There's one up that mountain. The word for kingdom is feminine. Seek first the queendom. And the feminine aspect is our intuition. And this is the part that's been crushed down for so long, for so many thousands of years, a couple thousand at least or more. So think of the aspects of, 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 of a true, a sacred, sacred woman you know, tenderness, gentleness, love, kindness, intuition, knowing, we have a knowing in the feminine aspect of us. The masculine aspect sees like a straight line, like can see the end point and just go there, you know? And so these videos must drive the masculine mad sometimes. So it's like, just what it, someone asked me, I said that in one of my videos, some guy, I, I won't identify which which um, professional <laughs> player. <laughs> I'm kidding. I was like, what are what are your three main points in that? You know, and I'm like, okay, well, look, like, I don't know. I mean, I know I knew exactly what they were, but it took me speaking them this way, conveying them this way to find those. So I'm like, watch the video. I already put it out. You find the three main points. Find the three main points that are the main points for you. Or don't, like we'll eat and talk about something different, you know? That's hilarious. But I'm learning, I'm learning still so much from the masculine. And sometimes I just go, here, here are the main points, but that's so boring to me. There's a richness around all of this. There's something about being in nature and taking our time. And if you don't have this time, then, you know, maybe you have different priorities right now. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't, I don't know. I mean, I know, I know what I'm talking about, but. <sighs> so.
So when you get in the stillness and you learn how to follow your intuition, higher truths are conveyed to you and you're invited to, to go a different direction than what your ego mind will say. My ego mind would never ever end my life. Well, I can't say never ever have me post the last video that I posted. I still am like, why is that still up? But but it's not me in all of my totality. It's me in a moment dealing with a program that I still had going on in, in myself that was stuck. And because of fasting, because of fasting from a certain out that I used to have that I would go to, you know, to try to make myself feel better in the, in the moment. Um, just like if you constantly just flip the TV on when you get home, if you live by yourself, you know, or you, you can, or just zone out playing video games like seven hours a day or something, you know, it wasn't like I was doing that seven hours a day, what I was doing. It's just, I was invited into this fast with a group of people and I chose to go forward with it. And, oh, what was I going to fast from? Well, I asked my intuition and I was like, oh, really? Okay, fine. And you can, I mean, you can fast from like orange juice. I, I don't know. It doesn't matter. It's not something that's necessarily bad. It's just something that you were used to relying upon. Like if I was used to relying upon... Um, going to Facebook or something and seeing how many likes I had from my friends and how how invested are they are are they in my life you know it's like um, interesting so I'm getting insights while I'm speaking but anyway uh, uh, let me focus here for you guys is why because um, some of the insights I get are for you guys and some of them I don't know, they're just for the rest of my life. But back to, so if I gave up that, let's say, because when I moved to Montreal, from California to Montreal, I didn't have my social group. Um, I didn't, it cost a lot to call people at that time. Um, so it's like I couldn't stay in contact with any of them unless I wanted to write them letters. And um, they spoke a different language and it just caused this sort of identity crisis because it was like, who am I apart from my title, apart from my past, apart from what I've built up so much. I hadn't realized how much I'd built up in my community here in California until I moved out and had nothing in Montreal and started all over for that year, my stage, uh, which French for internship. Mm. Anyway. <sighs> this is what happens when you fast from something that was an addiction for you or has been your go-to and you realize how much you um, we're getting, and my friends told me about this before I entered back into the dating world, you know, and then I pulled back again um, for a short time and, you know, got my bearings again because people were like, oh, you can just keep dating people and people just get dating highs from like dating and dating and, and getting messages from people and I don't know, like all that kind of stuff. And so um, people can keep jumping from one relationship to another to try to keep getting validation externally. But if you look at who, and, and people can do that and try to keep doing that in their marriages as well, you know, get validation from the other person. And friendships are very deeply important. Like after that video that I made a couple days ago, where I was just dealing with this old programming from childhood, where I was taught because of my parents' projections of their own self onto me, you are not worth knowing. You, or you're worth knowing to a certain capacity and you're worth being intelligent. You know, they really encouraged that, which thank God, you know, because I got a lot of schooling and knowledge 
in that time. Um, but you're not really worth knowing really deeply and intimately. And that, that part, intimacy, is an annoyance to us because we avoid that. We don't have that in our lives. Not that they consciously said this. This is just what I experienced as a child. And so the lack of that closeness, when you want that closeness so much, um, your experience of that teaches you that something must be wrong with you, that you don't get to have that closeness. Other people can have it in movies or what looks like around you, but you don't get to have that closeness. Um, but actually right after that, right after I opened up so much, it was on my way somewhere and I, um, I was just gonna video it because I couldn't write and drive and I had all these insights yesterday, not yesterday, it wasn't yesterday, that day, uh, it, it broke through these barriers that I had been wanting to break through for, for the longest time. And so I was so glad of that, that I wanted to convey some of what I learned so I could remember it and not forget it. Because sometimes we enter into this deep stillness and we get all these beautiful insights and then our ego mind takes over again. It's like, what? That was stupid. Um, we don't need that. Let's throw that away. Let's go back to let me control you and keep trying to get external validation. It's much more secure. We've got that locked in, you know? Look at how hot I am now. <laughs> That's so funny to me. <laughs> It's like I could lock that in. I, you know, I can, I definitely can. Like, I have no problem if I wanted to lock in external validation in that way, but I don't live like that. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's so funny because I was just about to get up, but I wanted a drink of water. Oh, I was like, there are men behind me, of course. <laughs> it's hilarious. That is so funny. Because my intuition told me to get up. I would have been right where they are, but I wanted to get some water first. I don't know if my intuition was giving me space for that or knew or what. That's hilarious. Anyway, so, yeah, look how hot I am now. Hi. I'm making a video. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. I know. It's like doing work out here. Why not? <laughs> okay, so, um... All right. All right, so I know that I could, any of us can. We can find ways, believe me. It's like survival mechanism. I, oh, I love it. We can find ways, it's like two grandfathers to get external validation, you know, and if we don't get it from other people, then people go to substances, unfortunately, you know, drugs or, I recommend roller skating, but I'm always like, I probably have to say like, check with your doctor first, your medical doctor. But anyway, but don't be intimidated by them. I love it. I've talked about that in other videos. So. Hi, I love your hat. Hi, it says love. Anyway, so just because we can get external validation or we can go to drugs or we can numb ourselves with TV or get the highs from TV shows, you know, and just stay in that and not, not work on int intimacy in our own lives. I'm gonna cry. I won't. <sighs> I put on this special makeup that's like, don't cry with this on. I, no, I would cry anyway if I needed to, but I don't want that energy trapped in my body. I don't want that program. And by me being transparent, I didn't know why my intuition was asking me to post it. Sometimes it's just because, like, this is deeply, it was deeply personal. Sometimes it's because if I don't keep going on this path, then 
it's like I have this feeling I'll be dead. I'm not dead physically. I'm not suicidal, okay? <sighs> I just will put that in the tag sometimes because if people are, then they can find another way. I mean dead like if I entered back into the matrix, you know? It's like once you take... I can't remember the red or the blue pill. The pill that wakes you up to the matrix. <sighs> then you understand the whole picture. Then you, then, well, you're, you're, it's revealed to you. You see it, you experience it, you know it. To go back is to go backwards and to live a fake life and one with numbness and not, not feeling your feelings and experiencing the fullness of this not being able to be still in the moment. <sighs> Feel your isness who you are, behind your name, behind whatever your go-tos are. Okay. Behind your face, the soul being of you. I invite you to know that you, the deeper you, the deeper I. I talked to my friend, I got to talk to my friend the other day for over an hour. And he was like, I mean, it was so nice one evening just to be able to catch up. But he got a hold of me because, because of that video, you know? And he was like, you can always talk to me. And I was like, I know I wasn't putting out there as a cry for help. It was just, just, my intuition and he's like that was so bold of you so brave you know and thank god thank you god thank you divine love that sometimes i briefly get feedback in my real life my real life you know this is my real life but in my 3d physical life people that are there are loving and that's what i was going to say after that video i was so opened up and I was in this place and it ended up that three, at least three others of my dearest friends that were in this group with me 14 years ago, they were all there. Four, four, I know another one, but I got to talk to three of them and they really opened up to deep places because I was in a deep place too. So it I'm not saying just because of that, it just gave them space to feel safe to go to that place. And that's what that video does for people is you're allowed to go to the weirdest, most painful places. And that's not all of who you are and that's not all of who I am. And so what? You know? So what if people distort it or make fun of me in the future or whatever? Hi. Why does it matter if I don't go forward and be bold and live like this? Then who else is going to do it? Who else is going to change the world? I'm not in charge of what they do. Hi. All right. How are y'all? I choose to do what I'm called to do and that's it. And if I don't, I die because for me, death would be being fake again, being numb again, shutting back down, being afraid of intimacy, afraid of closeness, afraid of my body, afraid of being me, afraid of what I found. <sighs> Running back to try to get validation from people who offer me scraps. I'm not interested in that. I got to try that out for so many years. Y'all look awesome. Yeah, keep it up. Oh, they're beautiful, man. Oh, beautiful. Wow. This couple of, anyway, that was such inspiring. 
But right when I'm talking about this, this is how the world reflects back to you. I pro you don't have to take my word. I was gonna say I promise, but find it out yourself. When I'm in this vibration of love and thankfulness, and appreciation and openness and like, screw that, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be me. And I don't care who rejects me because I'm not getting my validation from external. As much as I can, let go of that, keep surrendering it, keep dying, still hanging around. That's what Ali was talking about. You're hanging, your egotism, you're letting that die over and over. You're in the stillness. Um, Eckhart Tolle in his book, The Power of Now says, in presence, in deep presence and stillness, um, your egotism and your pain body doesn't have room to keep staying alive. And your addictions too. I'm so... What I was seeing in that last video is I was in my mind, you know, in the old program in my mind. Oh, listen to that part. And when you misidentify yourself, it's called a mistaken identity. I'm not seeking first the queendom of God, the, my intuition, this deeper knowing, this wisdom and love at the same time combined in like a marriage. It's power, wisdom, and love. I've talked about that before, but I was reminded of it this morning. What if you're powerful, but you're not wise? Then you can just crush people like dictators have. If you're wise, but you don't use your power to do anything, then what is that wisdom gonna get you? You're just sitting there. And then if you don't have love, I tempered in that, you know? Oh, big hill. Look, oh, I'm all excited about the big hill. I'm excited because you guys are here. If I was doing this by myself, I might be excited to turn on a song to, to like help me get up that hill, but maybe not. Sometimes I'm like, let's just do it and see what it's like. What I do is I'm like, I'm here in this step. I don't look ahead and be like, oh, this is a hard hill. I just, I'm in this step and let me enjoy this step. You know, I wish I would do that more with my life and the torturous experiences that show up. Sometimes they're not torturous when I allow, you know? They just, they just are, you know, and I'm learning. But uh, we're so aversive to pain, to feeling pain and crying and feeling our feelings. But I'm just like, hey, if this is what's going to get me through to the other side, I want to get to the other side. And even if I don't get to the other side, I know I want to feel right now because I like feeling better than being numb. I like... I, I like... Um, knowing my soul self more than spending all my energy trying to get scraps somewhere else, you know? That's what I learned to do in childhood. So I don't wanna, so, okay, what I was saying is in that, in that video before, I forgot what I called it. Oh, am I an annoyance or am I love? If you get caught in judgment and you're judging yourself, then when you go into judgment of yourself or anybody else, okay, so can, you can know this. Oh, wait, if I don't have wit love with my power and wisdom, then what is my power and my wisdom? Like love can infuse the wisdom and, and the power and make me a powerfully wise lover. <laughs> Hi, morning. I like the sound of that. <laughs> Oh my gosh, okay, so so back to when you're in judgment of anyone, you're, you're, you're definitely here in your ego mind, not your soul self, okay? Because judgments shut down this higher awareness. When you're in this deeper awareness self, it's like you don't have a gender even. You're, you're, I'm not male or female there. I'm ageless completely. I'm fearless because I have nothing to lose. I'm abundant because I'm not missing anything. I'm just in love. I'm living in this higher place of knowingness and loving. 
And it doesn't make sense to the mind because the mind always wants to do, and this is being, okay? And so we could say I'm being judgmental over here, but I'm not, I'm doing judgment. When I, I noticed the other day, something came up where I, it is my duty to protect I won't say what, it's kind of like if I, it's more than, maybe I'll say what, let's see. Well, I use the example of if you were on a deserted island and a baby washes up to shore. I used to use this all the time with my clients. Look at this hill we're going up. And you choose, I'm gonna love this baby, you know? then you'd want to protect it from snakes or fierce animals that come up that a baby can't yet protect him or herself from, you know? And it's so weird because we're more than two months, well, about two months away from Christmas, not to date this, it doesn't have to be, it doesn't matter what date you find this, because I feel like it comes to you when you're in the same frequency, when you need it the most, you know, or when it's best for you, when we'll add joy and peace for your life. I, so, oh, big view of the ocean, hold on. I don't know if you guys, So, but St. Nicholas, Santa Claus, keeps showing up everywhere. Like, I was cleaning out part of my car to try to find something in the middle of the console of my car. And I didn't look back and I went and skated or whatever. I came back and there's a napkin with, with Santa Claus on it, on my chair. And then yesterday, I have someone that helps me clean my house. And I came back and there was a St. Nicholas towel on my bed, you know, all folded up. And he, just, just him. And... And he is, oh, now we just see the ocean. He is meant to be the saint of the protector of children, of course, you know how generous he is with children and of sailors, you know? Here's the ocean. And so, but this was, in my mind, back to the island. There's an island over there. That's an island. Um, I don't know if you can see the land part of that. Yeah, but, um, <sighs> there's this notion of protecting children. And so I felt it was my duty in a way to protect certain children. And then um, I started getting judgmental of the people that were putting what I saw, putting children in harm's way. And so, um, oh, I saw these women start out when I started out. These other women. So, but what I realized as St. Nicholas kept showing up was that I... So hot. It was just like a story going down her arm. I wish I could film everybody that comes across my path because you would see so much how, I mean, it probably says wisdom, love. I mean, because there was an owl, wisdom, love, and power on her arm. I'm not kidding. This is how my life works out. It's like the coolest signs will show up right as I'm talking about them and teaching them. It's just, um, I think someone said, Marian Williamson said that if you're not having synchronicities over and over and over in your life all day long, then you're not in the flow. That's your indication. Be like the alchemist by um, Coelho. Um, and that book, 
he's always he's having synchronicities all the time now sometimes your ego will create synchronicities like oh road runner runner is i kept getting these synchronicities because they were i was vibrating what the e what my egotism wanted the validation that my egotism wanted so it's kind of like if you keep wanting people to glorify you and you keep seeing billboards that say cheryl you know and it's like oh look at the synchronicities you're, you can be vibing that and that can show up in your world too. That does not mean that you need to keep following that path. So I'm learning to discern, you know, cause it's like, um, I kept seeing this thing over and over. I'm like, get out of my life. It was so funny. I mean, it's funny once you realize it, it's torturous until you do, but the, the pain brings you to, what do they say? Um, necessity is the mother of invention it's kind of like pain will bring you to your path um what do they say i was thinking this the other day um it was like we either learn by knowledge and wisdom by getting that and applying it to our lives or we, or we learn by the whip of destiny that's what i was taught by this guy that was teaching about doskalos so he said he used to say I'm like, please, no more whips of destiny. But, um, whatever. I just, as I accept what is. So let's go back to the judgment thing, okay? Is when you're in judgment, you're here, you're constricted. And you can't see clearly. When I let go of judgment, even though I thought children were not going to be protected if I let go of judgment, you know? Then I realized, oh, that's the child in me. That is the child in me that didn't feel safe didn't feel protected in childhood from people misusing sexuality actually treating people like objects using them for their own validation like smoking a cigarette you know they would use people that way and not even think about it because they're just so used to doing it people can get numb just like I guess if you are a factory owner in a different country and you just had six-year-olds working and you just get used to making six-year-olds work all day at your factory because you get stuff done you know we do that in our own lives you guys we do that we treat ourselves in certain ways i wasn't protecting different parts of myself when we keep going to external validations and going to addictions and things that keep reinforcing the old message that you really you are an annoyance which is not true and you are not worth knowing which is not true because <sighs> i am love i'm love i am consciousness in a human form i get to be christ to you to me <sighs> with all of divine love's help um with all of the ways that they're constantly showing up to love me in my life and hold me and get to know me and me get to know the divine. But this is not through spiritual bypassing, okay? Spiritual bypassing is when you run to spiritual things because, and I did this too, so I know this path. I didn't feel safe in this world. So I kept running to spiritual things because I felt safe there until actually something horrible happened in the spirit realm about six or seven years ago. So um, anyway, that teaches you not to spiritual bypass because it teaches you that you just can't run away from your problems. But it doesn't mean you're stuck with them. This is why I was talking about your own intuition and discernment and wisdom and love and using power in the right way. All of those combined really help free you. They, you find the right wayness, you know, seek first the queendom of divine love and this right way of beingness in your being self and not right or wrong, just the highway. Elliot had a song that was unreleased. I didn't get to hear it until after he died called Dancing on the Highway. It's talking about this high path. And he says, I'll be here at my station all night. So come and find me. Like, 
Like I didn't find him until after he died for some reason. And it says in that song, it says a lost love, it's me, is waiting to find him when he dies because I had a knowing when he was alive. It's just coming more fully to me right now that I wouldn't know him in this life unless he died to his old self. I wasn't going to compete with his addictions. I wasn't willing to do that. I had already known my parents with their own addictions. You can be addicted to masochism, addicted to being a people pleaser, addicted to substances, addicted to whatever. Using people like objects. And I made up my mind as much as I loved Elliot, you know, and we connected at one time. It's like we were dating, whatever. I wouldn't be with him when he was buried to his addictions. But I knew also not to be in judgment of him ever because it was stupid. He was so much more than his addictions. He was so conscious. So, and I must have been too, I must have been, I was married to my own addictions back then. I was still numb to stuff. Maybe Elliot and I could have helped cure each other. I mean, we did in a way afterwards. But anyway, in that song, the cure is still happening right now for me. And I'm sure for him. Anyway, he said dancing on the highway the broken line, the broken end line that leads from you to me. I made a video of that. <sighs> Hello. <sighs> All right. Um, I'll wrap this up, but I want to finish with that. Hi. <laughs> All right. So, um, it's weird. I'm I gave up something else for this fast. And I'm like, I don't know if I just crossed that. <sighs> Let's see. <sighs> anyway. Hmm. All right, well, I start again right now. Oh, I forgot. It's a beautiful phrase by one of these monks. And he says, I begin again. Oh, if I remember, I'll put it in the comments who said that. I know who told me about this monk, this other monk. And so, but he just said, I begin again. So let me go back to the addiction thing and the judgment thing. So I was in judgment of this one person who I didn't feel was protecting children. And of course that goes deep, just like some people who are really animal advocates about protecting animals. It's that same feeling in me. But then when St. Nicholas kept showing up, I was like, oh, and I let go of my judgment for briefly, but it felt scary to let go of judgment. How can I not judge this person? I have to control the situation. So children aren't harmed, you know, cause it's come to my, it's, it was definitely my responsibility to do something. I had to do something. Like if the child washed up on the shore and there was a snake in front of you, what do you do? Well, look, if I'm still afraid, because I'm put back in this child, here's an adult child position, and I'm in this one down helpless position, then I don't have, see, I'm not in my real power. I'm just an ego trying to control things. And all that does is create resistance and people push back and it escalates everything. But when I noticed, oh, this is about, how I wasn't protected in childhood. And once I was committed to protecting myself, this part of me that was objectified as, as a female and as a person and wasn't shown the deep intimacy and love and holding and holding that I wanted so much in childhood. Once I'm committed to give that to her, then I'm fearless. And I'm like, oh, we can handle this thing. That person has no power over these children. 
except for the power that I give away. And the power that I give away by staying in judgment, because judgment keeps you out of your true power. It keeps you in your ego mind where you're trying to control things. And the same, the same, back with that last video when am I annoying or am I love? Now I can't take it down, can I? Right? I can, but anyway, is if I identify with what they taught me, my personality self, and what they believed about themselves, because they're living according to their limited beliefs, and what I experience. See, you have deep experiences as, as a child, so if someone can say, you are love, Jesus loves you, smile, you know, we love you, but when they're not showing it, okay, hold on, I was going to sit down there, but, um, I got this intuition to keep going to the end. It's almost here. So you can see the expansive view. And we'll wrap this up. Is, but um, if you identify, you have a mistaken identity with what they are talking about, with what they, how they mistook their identity. You have deep experiences where, oh yes, they tell you you are loved, but you're experiencing scraps. And so then you go look for validation. Okay, look at this pattern. It's very important, even though... It's the end here. You, if, um, our world teaches us to be in this pattern of looking for external validation. Always, if this doesn't validate you, then you just need to find a higher, you know, some stronger, stronger place. Here, look at this. I got to where I needed, where I wanted to go to from the next video. It just took an hour to get here. If I'm not running, it takes an hour to get here. If I'm running, it takes half hour. Anyway, so our world, okay. And sometimes some people say we're in a kind of matrix, like some kind of if the the physicists and um scientist people are studying and they're finding they're, they they say we might be living in some kind of a hologram some kind of a matrix i don't know whatever whoever's programming this stuff like whatever is um you still can get out of it by knowing you are the consciousness and you still can can that's what i was going to say our world teaches us to keep, you're not gonna find it in here because your egotism cannot find it in here. You don't find it in here. You find it in here, in your consciousness, in your being self by being. You are a human being, not a human doing. And so uh, when you're in judgment, it shuts you off from here. When you're seeking external validation through addictions or through other people, or to keep trying to get yourself pleasure through um, other people or through um, addictions, substances. As you do that, and I know from my own self, I'm only speaking from my own self, is I, re I was reinforcing every time I keep going to that addiction, let's say it's like a cigarette, which I don't care about cigarettes or and I'm not against any particular thing. I'm not against alcohol, I'm not against you know, Netflix or whatever, you know, video games, like, like, um, this is how I make my living. I don't, but before I was married to someone who made video games. Anyway, um, so it's not about those, but if, if you can have second things, if you have first things in order, when you're, when your second things are first, then all I was doing, like, let's say every time I pick up a cigarette, I'm saying, I want this thing to make me feel better. I want this thing to make me feel better. I don't have the capacity to bring healing and love and tenderness and wisdom and power to this, this deep part of me. I don't have, I don't have the ability. Look at this. I don't have the ability to give her this more zoomed out view and this peace that passes understanding. I kept, what I was doing was reinforcing my childhood of saying, you know, all these people, uh, they just give you scraps. And so keep trying to perform so you can get scraps from these people. Keep trying to prove to them that you're worth more than scraps. 
Well, when you know, when you come into the knowing that you are worth more than scraps, you let go of all that stuff because you see it's just reinforcing an old belief. I hope you're getting this. This has been such, it's taken me going to Mordor and like throwing the ring in, throwing myself in, get, being rescued just on the cliff, like hanging onto the cliff in order to come back out of this alive. It's been such a transformative process um, for me to get this wisdom to convey to you guys and to live in myself. I've had to face death over and over and over again, the death of this part of me. Which felt like it would be the death of me, you know, because it's like, if I'm going to put something out that might make it so all my friends reject me and do think I'm annoying, then it's like, it's quite a risk, you know? But if I'm like, uh, we'll see, we'll see who's left, whoever's left are on my team, you know? Because they know, they know me beyond one video, you know? They know me beyond one expression of where I was working through an old program and I had to cry because it was a loss to let that go. I'm like, no, it was a loss to betray my parents in that and say, I'm not carrying your idea of reality around in me anymore. That's limited and it's keeping me away from love and it's keeping me away from um, this this joy that divine love wants me to live in and wants to give to me and wants to free me. All right, that's enough. I wish you so much love on this journey. I hope my sincerity and my authenticity and my being f transparent here helps you to be transparent in your own life. You don't have to put it in a video. I don't recommend it, <laughs> but I wish you love and you're worth love and you're worth freeing yourself. That's, I'm hearing Bob Marley say, none but ourselves can free our minds. Immense your, yourself from mental slavery. None but ourselves can free our minds. I was on a two hour call yesterday, two hours to keep learning the stuff and reiterating it so I have it deep in my life. And I'm glad to do that. And so you watching this long video, it doesn't have to be long. Some of them are really short from other people or wherever, but you are equipping yourself for the rest of your life. And if that's what it takes, then it's worth it so that you can be free. But you get to choose that. But I recommend not, not waiting for scraps from anybody. If they're stuck in this scrap mindset, wish them love, wish them well, don't judge them. Because I was there like yesterday, you know, two days ago, when I was stuck in that program in my mind. Wish you love.